Hey, welcome to the channel. My name is Chels, and if you are trying to lose weight on a plant-based diet or really any diet, then this is the channel for you. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my top five steps for how to kickstart your vegan weight loss journey. These are things that I wish I'd known at the start of my weight loss journey and that once I learned them, I was able to lose 40 pounds and keep them off. And I've now kept that off for coming up two years. I think it might even be over two years. Number one is to understand how a calorie deficit is vital for you to lose weight. And this is really key because if you don't have an understanding of what a calorie deficit is and how that works to get you burning fat, then you're gonna be constantly looking for the next fad, the next fix, the next kind of rule-based system that you can follow, which is only going to work if and only if it gets you into a calorie deficit anyway, but you're gonna be stuck following rules without understanding this really basic concept that any kind of weight loss works because of. So when you're wanting to lose weight, for your body to actually dip into those stored fat cells, you need to actually create a deficit of calories. So you have a certain amount of energy that is going out of your body at any given time and a certain amount of energy that is coming in. Think about this on a daily basis. If you are maintaining your weight, then what that means is that the energy coming into your body and the energy going out of your body are relatively stable. And a calorie is not something evil, it's really just a unit of energy. So I'm going to use calorie and energy interchangeably here. So you've got this energy coming into your body, you've got this energy going out of your body, and if you want to lose weight, you've got to change this balance here. Because if you don't do that, then you are perfectly fueling your body's requirements with the energy that it has coming in or the calories that it has coming in. What you need to do to start losing weight is you need to actually consume less calories than you need. So your body goes, okay, I need to get that energy from somewhere. This is like a really basic law of thermodynamics where energy can either be created, created or destroyed, it needs to come from somewhere. So in that instance where there's not enough calories to fuel your daily functions like movement, exercise, your basal metabolic rate, your body has to take that fuel from somewhere and that's the reason that you have fat. So it takes those calories, it takes that energy that it needs for your daily functions from your stored fat cells. So a calorie deficit is 100% vital for fat loss and any diet, like I said before, any diet works to get you into one. Intermittent fasting, paleo, keto, carnivore diet, high carb, low fat, fully raw, raw till four. Any diet that works has worked because it's gotten you into a calorie deficit. So as you can see, there's tons of different ways to get into a calorie deficit. I mean, I didn't even mention ones like portion control, weight watches, like literally anything that aims to get you burning fat does so via a calorie deficit. And why I believe it's so important to understand this is that you get to ask the right question when you understand that. And that question is, well, if a calorie deficit is the only thing that is going to lead to me losing weight, and that is true 100% of the time, that if you have lost weight in the past, it's because you're in a calorie, calorie deficit. If you are currently not losing weight, it's because you're not in a calorie deficit, regardless of what your MyFitnessPal is telling you or your fitness watch. Your body is far more accurate than that. If you are not losing fat, you are not in a calorie deficit. And this is scientific law. This is, this is thermodynamics, this is basic physics. If a calorie deficit is so vital for me to get in to lose weight, what is the best way to eat to effectively get into a calorie deficit that is also going to be easiest and healthiest for me to sustain long term? And that brings me to step number two. So once you understand I need to get into a calorie deficit, then you can actually use calorie density to get into a calorie deficit in the easiest and most effective way possible. And guys, I can't, I can't do it. It is so freaking hot in New Zealand right now. Like I am sweltering, so you're getting the bun. All right, this is it, <laughs> I'm gonna do it. So effectively calorie density is just the amount of calories that are in a certain weight of food. So this is a spectrum of some things being incredibly high in calories for a very small amount of food and other things being incredibly low in calories for a large volume of food. So it's not that there's a good or a bad food in that instance, it's just that there is a spectrum there. Take a look at this chart. You can see that on the very low end of the calorie density scale, you have vegetables. They come in at about 100 calories per pound. On the other end of the spectrum, you have oil. Oil comes in at four 
1,000 calories per pound. So there's a 40 fold difference in the least calorie dense food on the planet to the highest calorie dense foods on the planet. Here's another example of what that looks like. We've got a pound of potatoes here for about 400 calories. And that's the same amount of calories as this tiny, tiny little amount of oil. One has relative low calorie density, the other has extremely high calorie density. So how calorie density is so powerful is you start to be able to use those lower calorie dense foods increase those in your diet while at the same time reducing those high calorie foods so that you can actually eat more food while reducing your overall calories and there's been studies where people have been able to increase their food by double while halving their calories that's the power of calorie density i believe this is the most important thing when it comes to long-term effective weight loss where you can reduce your calories to get into that calorie deficit but you're able to do that in a way that doesn't make you go hungry because if you're going hungry on a diet there is no chance you're going to stick to that long enough to see consistent results and it's going to be torture at the same time who wants to go hungry being there done that doesn't work so the next step is how to do that on a super practical level but if you want to know more about calorie density and see some easy swaps you can make to make your high calorie elements lower then go check out this video i did all about some great calorie density swaps so step number three super obvious increase the amount of foods on that lower end of the calorie density spectrum and reduce those foods that are on the higher end of the calorie dense spectrum. The first easy step to doing that is to get rid of oil in your cooking. And I've done a video before where people have said, oh, you need healthy fat sources and you can't cut out oil. Guys, <laughs> oil is not the only fat source out there, all right? There are much better fat sources than oil. Cutting out oil in your diet does not mean that you are zero fat. It just means that you remove the most highly refined fat source that there is and you use water or you use something else instead. If you are not on a plant-based diet, then the same goes for butter or margarine or anything like that. These are all refined fats and they are incredibly high in calorie density. Not good for you either, all right? You can eat an avocado, you can eat olives, you can eat nuts and seeds instead. What I like to do is to dry saute my vegetables. So I will put them into a pan. If they need a little bit of water, I just pour a little bit of water in, just like a couple of tablespoons. And it works really, really well. I can honestly tell you that now that I've been doing this a couple of years, when I go out to eat at a restaurant, I can almost not stomach the oily stir fry vegetables that they make. Your taste buds will change phenomenally quick and you will actually appreciate that without oil more than if it had it. You're also going to save yourself hundreds of calories a day simply by eliminating oil from your cooking. I use baking paper when I'm roasting my vegetables or I use a non-stick pan. And if you want to know exactly how I do that, then you can go check out this video here. Once you've done that, you want to focus your diet mostly on whole foods starches. That's where most of your calories should be coming from if you're wanting to lose weight. So that means you trim out the fat, effectively, excuse the pun, from those higher calorie foods on the end of the spectrum. And you get most of your calories from things like beans, rice, potatoes, quinoa, whole grains, really anything that is below the calorie density of those foods. So even beans at the highest calorie dense whole food carbohydrate are only 600 calories per pound. And what we've kind of seen in terms of people being able to eat ad libitum, it's called, what a cool word, ad libitum, is that when people are given foods that are under 600 calories per pound, they can eat ad libitum as much as they want and still lose weight because the overall calorie density of their diet goes way down because most of the calories from your diet are gonna be coming from those higher calorie foods like chips, ice cream, oil, refined breads, crackers, all of those kind of things if you still have them in your diet. And even if you have them in a small quantity in your diet, like it's only like a little part of your meal, they can add up extremely quickly. Three slices of bread, it comes out at about 300 calories, but that's only 120 grams. That's not much food. And that would definitely not fill me up. Contrast that with a sweet potato, which is a similar amount of calories, about 315 calories. 
but nearly four times the amount of food. That's nearly 400 grams of food there. You'll get a lot more fullness and be able to eat more food when you switch to most of your calories coming from those kind of starches. The next piece of the puzzle is to increase the amount of non-starchy veggies that you're eating. And the easiest way to do this is a 50-50 plate. A 50-50 plate is nothing magical. You may have heard about it, may have not. It's basically this idea that you want half of your meal to be non-starchy vegetables and then half to be whatever else you're eating. And like I've already recommended to you, that should be something like beans, rice, potatoes, or a combination as the predominant component of that other half of your meal. And then the 50% vegetables is going to reduce that calorie density further. So you're eating the same volume of food, but because you've replaced half of that meal with vegetables, the overall calorie density comes down. Because you remember that calorie density chart where vegetables are only about 100 calories per pound, if the other half of your meal was let's say 600 calories per pound and you would normally eat a pound of it we're going to do a little bit of math here but if you were normally going to eat a pound that's going to be 600 calories let's say if you split that in half and you now have a, a half pound of vegetables that you've replaced that in that's adding 50 calories but it's taking away taking away 300 so you make, effectively make something that was 600 calories down to 350 calories it's a super effective way for you to reduce your calories without having to count them without without having to stress over them or know what they are and it's something that you can apply not only to the meals that you make every day just by adding a side of non-starchy vegetables but also something that you can incorporate into your cooking and if you don't know what non-starchy vegetables are google is your best friend rather than me listing them all the goal here is really to create a new normal for yourself so that it becomes normal to cook without oil it becomes normal to add a side of broccoli it becomes normal to add in a buttload of mushrooms and capsicum and onion into that risotto that you're already making. Creating a veggie eating habit has been the most impactful thing on my weight loss journey and I see it impact hundreds of other women when they start to implement that in the Lean of Plants program that I run. On a super practical level, being able to design your weight loss bowls and create delicious filling meals that you love, that are full of veggies and in that weight loss range is gonna be vital to your success. I've got a lot of free videos about how to do that, but if you're wanting to go deeper and really understand how to create three weight loss meals you love, I just released a mini course on exactly how to do that. So check out the description if you want to get on board. Step number four is to set up your environment so that you are more likely to succeed. And I always quote this and I always will, but James Clear in his book Atomic Habits says that environment is the hidden hand that shapes human behavior. Remember how I was saying that what you're wanting to do here is to create a new normal because we have all these biases, right? But one of the strongest ones that we have is that we wanna defend whatever feels normal for us right now. So environment and changing that is one of the ways that you can have environment force a new normal or shape a new normal on you without having that be super difficult or feel like it is something that you are fighting. The hardest part about weight loss has got nothing to do with knowing what to do. It's got nothing to do with whether you're eating a broccoli or a potato. It has to do with actually being able to stick with what you know will, will work and to be able to do that consistently. So environment is incredibly powerful in doing that. And your environment is really just anywhere that you live or work or exist on a daily basis and where most of your routines live. So for me, I work from home, my environment is mostly my home. If you are a student, then your environment is probably a combination of home and your school. So here's how to set up your environment for success. First of all, you wanna make it easy for yourself to be eating the kind of foods that are gonna help you lose weight. So buy them, buy a lot of them, have a lot of vegetables in your fridge in your freezer, especially things that are easy to use and that you enjoy. I love frozen veggies for this reason because they are accessible all year round and I can quickly use them in some kind of stir fry. 
I love broccoli, so I buy a ton of broccoli, sometimes 10 at a time. Next, you want to remove or reduce the amount of trigger foods in your environment. And if you want to know more about triggers and how they affect cravings, then check out this video I did about how to break your cravings. Almost all of us fall into this trap of planning to be our best selves 100% of the time, when instead you want to be planning for your worst moments. Because that's when it's really going to matter how your environment is because you again will fall into your default behaviors, your normal. So if you have trigger foods in your environment and you're seeing them constantly, they're easy to get, then you're going to be constantly fighting that trigger and wanting to eat those foods. Whereas if they're out of your environment, then you're less likely to get that trigger in the first place and you're more likely to not eat them because to go and get them is going to have a lot more effort than if they're just sitting at eye level in the fridge. And I know that there's going to be people saying like, I can't get the chips out of my environment. I can't get the ice cream out of, my, out of the freezer. I need it. Fine, don't do it. But there are barriers that you can put between yourself and those triggers to make it easier for you. Doesn't mean you have to completely eliminate it. The goal here is to make your environment as conducive to your success and the habits you want to cultivate as possible. Maybe that's putting your treats up onto a high opaque container so that you don't see them every time you open the cupboard. Maybe that's putting fruits on your counter rather than cookies. There's lots of little ways to reduce the effects of triggers in your environment, but ultimately it is going to be easier if those are just not there at all. Next, like I said, plan for your worst moments. Have a backup plan. This is your backup plan for the meals that you're going to make when you're tired, stressed, hungry, and Domino's is calling your name. Those moments are going to come. So have some kind of contingency plan and some backup meals that you, you know you love, they're easy to make, and that you can make quickly when you're hungry. I also have backup meals that they're not really quick to make, but they satisfy cravings for me. So I'll make like creamy pastas. And lastly, in your environment, you want to have the foods that you want to eat, they're ready to eat when you're hungry. <laughs> Meal prepping is way too much effort for me and way too much brain power. But what I like to do is to have a constant supply of cooked up starches. Most of the time that's potatoes. So I will steam up potatoes or I will bake sweet potatoes in the oven. And when I get hungry, I can throw together a component bowl because the, the always, the hardest part is going to be waiting for those starches to cook and actually preparing them. Things like rice and beans and quinoa and all that kind of stuff. Number five, set your goal as improvement rather than getting it all right. Guys, I cannot tell you the importance and the power of releasing yourself from the pressure of getting this right and instead focusing on incremental improvement. When you are obsessed with getting everything right and you make that your goal, what happens the moment that something slips? Everything falls to pieces because you feel like a failure, you feel guilt, and you feel like you're never going to be able to do it because you've lost trust and confidence in yourself. If you feel any of that, that is a very normal feeling. I've talked to hundreds, if not thousands of women now who feel exactly the same. So you are not alone. We exist in this constant pendulum swing of dieting where everything is going great, everything is perfect, and then swinging to binging and despair when you slip up and it is just, a horrible horrible cycle and it never gets us closer to that goal right so instead of having that as the goal to get everything right have your goal improvement because when you can incrementally improve and you improve and you prove improve even if that is something very small over time you build momentum and trust in yourself and you will get to that goal that you have always work on a foundation you can always level up but when you try and skip that and jump the chasm between who you are now and who you want to be that's too big a leap you have to build that brick by brick by brick and i talk about this a lot in the podcast so if you're not a podcast listener please consider subscribing so that you can actually understand how all of this works more i really really want you to get this because it is so incredibly powerful Here's some examples of what that can look like. So firstly, 
Most people don't want to give up treats when they first start. I don't want to give up treats ever. So rather than saying, well, I'm going to just go and binge on this huge bag of cookies, what can improvement in that look like for you? Have a look at the calorie density scale. If the worst choice that you could make, remember it's a spectrum, it's not right or wrong, good or bad food, it's a spectrum there. If the worst choice that you could make would be that sleeve of Oreo cookies, what's a slightly improved choice look like that? Is that going to be some whole foods, plant-based cookies that you've made? Is that going to be half a sleeve of Oreos? It doesn't matter really what that is, but ask yourself in those moments, what does an improvement look like in my treats? You can also improve how you cope with failure and how you deal with that. What's your response when you fail and when you slip up? You can improve that too. A week-long binge could maybe just be a day-long binge or it could be deciding that you're going to get on track slightly quicker than you normally would. Something that's been incredibly powerful for Lean of Plants members, which is the program that I run, is implementing the next best mindset. And this is where in those moments where you're craving and you're fed up and you want to just binge or you want to just go off plan, whatever that looks like for you, that instead of doing the absolute pendulum swing worst that you could possibly do, which almost all of us fall into that pattern, you decide, well, you know what, this is the best thing, like this is the ideal that I'm not gonna do, that I'm going to just be like, nope, I can't do that. What's something slightly better than that? Okay, if I'm eating potatoes and broccoli, if that was my goal tonight, but I can't face that, what would it look like if I made plant-based burgers right and air fried potato chips no i'm not going to do that because i really really want to go and get that those burgers all right i'm i'm not going to do that i'm going to make it slightly better and so you just move down the spectrum again you get out of this all in because you're you're going okay i'm not going to do that best thing i'm going to do the next best thing i'm not going to do that next best thing i'm going to do the next best thing so you give yourself permission to do the next best possible thing that you can rather than this perfectionism and then just total not going to do that that most of us kind of go in and out of all the time and it's so simple but this works so well because you can improve because if you are the kind of person right now who makes a commitment to yourself but you don't follow through on that then make that commitment easier make it easier for yourself to succeed so that you can start to build that trust again you do not have to get this right you just have to get it going we've covered a lot of ground here so let's recap step number one is to understand that you need to get into a calorie deficit to lose weight step number two is to use calorie density to do that in the easiest and most effective way possible step number three is to eat more foods from the lower end of the calorie density spectrum and less foods from the higher calorie end Step number four was to set up your environment for success. And step number five was to have that goal to improve rather than get everything perfect. Now here's the thing you need to do to really make this work as you get started. Just pick one thing. Choose one thing that you're going to implement and focus on building a habit in that area. My recommendation to you is to simply focus on cultivating a veggie eating habit. That can be the one thing you focus on before you do anything else. Remember, if you can eat on the left side of that calorie density spectrum, then you are most likely going to get into a calorie deficit and lose weight. So creating a habit of eating a buttload of vegetables is going to be a key foundational habit that you're gonna to need to develop to not only start losing that weight, but also keep it off for the long term. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments, let me know what step you're going to start implementing to kickstart your journey. And don't forget you can get that mini course all about how to create three weight loss meals you love. And that will be in the description as well. All right, that's it. See you next week for another video. Bye.